Hello, stamping friends. I'm Pat Perlis with Perlis Stamp and Flair, and welcome to Learning with Friends. Each Thursday, I try to create a video that shows you a new technique or maybe some tips or tricks. And today we are going to do the batik um, technique. Now, I have not done this before, so I had to do some research to actually figure out how to do it. And I found several different videos and nobody did it exactly the same. So I was a little confused. I will say I'm still a little confused. Um, what batik is, is um, it's a process that was developed, I believe in Indonesia. Um, I think the name of the country was actually maybe in Java in Indonesia. But it's, so it's an old Indonesian technique. I say old, maybe they still do it, I don't know. But it's meant for fabric and they put wax patterns on the fabric and use that wax kind of as a resist. Um, and then they remove the wax after they're done. So we're gonna use embossing powder and we're gonna kind of do the same thing with paper. Um, and I'm gonna show you two different ways that are similar. I'm also gonna show you a card that was done um, using the burned batik video that I found out on Split Coast Stampers. And that one is a little different. Um, and I'm not sure that I really did it right or got the full effect. I love how the card turned out, but um, I'm gonna show you that card as well. So stick around to the end and you're gonna see four different cards, two of which are very similar. Um, and we'll explain that as we go through. But so let's turn the camera down and go ahead and get started. So the stamp set I'm gonna be using today is this stamp set called Gorgeously Made. It is from the current annual catalog. Love this stamp set. The reason I chose it is because most of the videos that I found suggested that we use a solid image. So this was probably one of the most solid images of any of the stamp sets I had. Now, the one card I'm going to show you, I did not really use a solid image. I used one that was kind of heavily lined, and I think it turned out great. So I'm not sure, um, again, perhaps it's because it's fatigue, and that's what they do with wax. They use solid images, and so perhaps that's why they said to use solid images. But I would encourage you, if you think you like this technique, once I show it to you, and you want to give it a try, um, I suggest you use it with different stamp sets and just experiment. Maybe take some scrap paper or inexpensive cardstock and just play around. Um, you do need cardstock. For my card, since I'm going to be using some autumn colors for this particular one, I'm starting with very vanilla. Um, on the other cards, I started with, with basic white. I almost said whisper white. It shows you how long they're up. I've been around. Um, you also need embossing powder. And here again, I got a little bit mixed, mess mixed messages. Some said you could use either clear or white, and some said specifically to use clear. So um, I've got a card with both, and I'll show you. Um, you need an embossing buddy, a heat tool, over some art ink, um, some colored inks, and I'm just using our Stampin' Up um, dye inks which are water-based and they seem to work really well. Um, and then you need some blending brushes or sponge job or something to smear the ink on. Um, a newsprint pad or something similar is helpful because we are gonna haul out our iron and the last step is to iron it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we do is we're gonna lay down some colors on here. So I said I was using fall today, so I've got wild wheat, moody mauve, and old olive is what I'm using. And I'm just going to, I will start with the moody mauve. I'm gonna use my blending brushes. I did do a couple of the cards with daubers because I had played around so much that all my blending brushes, I washed them once I finished with them. 
um, and they were all wet. So I got out daubers and that worked fine too. So again, and you don't have to be really um, too concerned about if it comes out blotchy or streaked or whatever, it really didn't seem to matter because by the time we get all the layers in there, it kind of um, disappeared. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. You can see this is kind of streaky, um, but it all seems to come out okay in the end. So that part didn't really seem to matter. So we're going to put this on here. And now I will add a little close this up before I stick my hand in it. And this side, let's use the wild wheat next. And this is just random. There's no rhyme or reason to where I'm adding these colors, okay? Um, kind of just here, there, wherever I felt. The wind was blowing me. <laughs> so. And you can blend the colors together. Um, if you choose colors that don't blend over each other real well, then minimize that. If you leave some white spots or uncolored spots, that works well as well and looks kind of nice. It gives you some lighter colors. So now I'm going to take my old olive and I probably should have inked to this one first because I think it's a little dry, but that's all right. We'll deal with it. Just press a little harder, right? So I'm going to pretty much totally cover my cardstock. Now my cardstock measures um, five and a half by four and a quarter. For the cards, I actually trim it down. But whenever I do a technique sheet of any kind, I I like to start with a little bit larger piece than I'm going to end up with, just because. Sometimes um, you like one part of the technique sheet better than another, and um, then you can kind of choose, pick and choose which section you want to use. Um, sometimes the edges when you're blending like this will get darker. Maybe you don't want that, so you can trim those off. So now I'm just going to heat set this ink with my heat tool just to dry it. And you're going to see me doing this throughout. You just want to make sure before each next step that your ink is dry, especially when we start working with the embossing powder. Okay, so we're going to help that's dry. Now, I also found that the embossing buddy is very important because even if the ink stays, if the ink is a little wet. Um, and when you add the embossing powder, you really only want it on the images and not everywhere. When the ink is wet, it will kind of stick to the wet ink. And then you're really tapping and trying to get it off. So, all right, I'm going to take my Versamark pad and I'm going to start with the first um, stem image that I'm going to use. I'm going to use two different ones. I'm going to use this one, which is the little bit heavier leaves. And then this one here, which is, I don't know, I call it the frilly stem. I don't really know what that's what that is, but it almost looks like something with buds. But this one's a little heavier. And I'm going to use this one first. So I like to do mine upside down. I just have better luck. And we are just going to kind of randomly stamp this on our inked cardstock. Now it does become a little bit difficult to see sometimes. So especially with all these lights shining on it. So I may have to pick it up and tip it to find out where it is. I don't really want it to overlap, although the next layer I will overlap. So I'm going to flip this around and we'll add some up here at the top. Now, if you're struggling with seeing where your images are, you can always put
put some embossing powder on here and then they will be very clear where they're at. I'm going to do my best not to have to do that. Okay, this is pretty. I think if I stay pretty much to the edge over here, I should be okay. Okay, now I don't have it obviously fully covered with images. Um, so let me bring in my embossing powder and I am using clear and you will see why on this card you would want to use clear because these colors that I just put on the cardstock, you want to be able to see them, right? Of course. You want the colors to show through those leaves. So now you can see, hopefully, where, where that is. I'm going to bring in my heat tool. And let me just put my cover back on my embossing powder. So just in case I get crazy and dump it on the floor. Um, and if you're watching for the first time, I usually use this old picky cake pan to do my embossing. It kind of helps me contain the powder from flying any further than I want it to. Not necessarily, that's, that's not really true. It still goes where I don't want it. Um, so now we're just going to heat emboss this. And I'm sorry for the noise. I know it does fade away eventually, but it also tends to cut out my voice, I think, so I'm not sure. Heating it just till it turns clear. Does your heat tool ever seem like it just doesn't want to aim where you want it to aim? You should look inside and see if I've got dirt or something there. Every once in a while, it feels like the heat's going everywhere but where I want it. Yeah. I want to make sure it's all involved. I'm just going to pick it up so I can check the shine. And it is hot. Okay, let me give this a Flip her around here. No, like a little spot right there. That's where it, I was aiming it there, but didn't want to go there. There we go. If you don't have it completely embossed, it will kind of give you a problem. I'm going to look down here just a little bit. Look one more time here. No, nope, I still see a spot. There we go. All right. It is not the easiest to see. I think it's harder to see the more lights I have, um, the harder it is for me to see it could be just my, my eyes. But that looks pretty good. So that should be nice and dry. Um, so the next step, what we're going to do is I am going to use these same three colors again, the Moody Mauve, 
uh, wild wheat and old olive because I'm doing another layer. So let me just check something here. So um, I'm going to go over these colors pretty much with the same in the same spots as I put these colors before. Now, if you miss it a little bit, it's not a big deal, but you just you'll see what happens when I do this. Can you see how that leaf image now really starts to pop down here as I make the ink darker? That's what we're going to do all over. So I'm just going to work my way around with the old olive first and darken it up. This one's going to take the most effort because, like I said, I should have inked my pad and I didn't. Okay. Can you see how those leaves are starting to, you can see them better as you darken the ink around them. And that's what we want to do. We want to make sure these ink, these leaves that are on here really start to pop. Okay, so here's a little green I put down here. So we'll just add a little bit of more old olive there. And I'm going to set this one aside. And let's do the wild wheat next. Doesn't matter the order. I'm just grabbing what I have. Yeah, this one's definitely got more ink in that pad. I need to get out my re anchor for sure on that old olive. And here I'm just kind of blending these over the other colors just a bit. I think I would like to try to get a little bit more old olive down here. It's green and you can see it, but it's I like it a little bit darker. The darker it is, the more you can see your images, obviously, as they pop through. Okay, and then the last color we add, close this up. So I'm gonna stick my hand. I'll get enough ink on my hands with this technique that I don't need to stick it in the pad by mistake. And you can probably see why I said it doesn't really matter much if, if you get some splotchiness as you're blending because we go over this more than once. So that kind of eliminates that, that issue. And even if you did have some splotchiness, I think it can just work in really pretty with the pattern that you're creating. Just gives it a little more texture if you do that, right? Okay, I'm going to call that good. Again, you can add as much or as little as you want. Now, I'm going to take a microfiber cloth, and you could use a paper towel too and just kind of wipe this off. And that's going to remove the ink from those embossed images. And you can see when I do that, I'm going to flip to a clean spot sometimes. When I do that, those images start to pop even a little bit more. 
You see that? They're pretty. So, all right. So the first layer is done. Now I want this, since I added more ink, I want this to be dry because I'm going to stamp another layer on here. So I'm going to hit it with my, my heat tool just a bit, just to make sure it's as dry as I can get it. Um, if you're not working on a time crunch or a video, you can just set it aside to dry to make sure it's nice and dry as well. But you do want that ink layer to be dry as best you can. And we'll do a little bit on the back too, just to help it out here. Okay. So now, cool off for just a second. I'm going to move these inks that I'm actually finished with all out of the way. And we are now going to use this other stamp from um, Gorgeously Made. And I'm going to stamp that in some areas that are kind of just as a fill-in, okay? So I will take my Versa Mark again. And here, because this is a pretty fine stamp, I'm not worrying too much if it overlaps a little bit, that's fine. Okay, and I'm holding it there for just a minute to give it a little extra time for the Versamark to, to transfer. Somebody told me to do that when you're stamping with Versamark at one point. And basically, they said if you just hold it there for a couple extra seconds, that apparently a little more ink transfers to the paper. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's kind of how I learned to do it. And when I don't do that, um, sometimes I feel like I don't get as much bursa mark on the paper for embossing as I would like. So, oh, where am I going to stick this one? How about we pretty spring it right down in here? And. Add a little corner in here. Did I use my embossing buddy? I can't remember. We're going to know in a minute. If I didn't, this probably won't turn out as nice as I'm hoping. Okay. Even though I did try to really dry the ink, I'm hoping we're okay. So I'll pick some of this up. Oh, looks like it looks like I might have remembered to do it. That was when I was practicing. That was one of the things I was having the most problem with, was remembering to use the embossing buddy. Um, a little bit more right here. Okay, that does look pretty good. All right, now we are going to heat emboss this again. I could get my pie pan back, but this one's kind of small. We'll just try it this way. Oops. That isn't good. Okay, give us a quick look here. Those embossed a little easier because they're so much smaller. Um, so we are finished with stamping and embossing. And we are now going to add another layer of ink on here. So this time I am going to use Blackberry Bliss and Copper Clay. And we're just going to kind of go all over these. And you'll see as I do this why um, I'm doing it that way. So 
grab a couple of clean brushes and let's start with the Blackberry Bliss first. And here I'm just not, I'm not gonna be real careful about what colors I go over because what I'm interested in is the embossed areas will still show um, the colors that they're currently on. So now we're just trying to make a darker background. I could do it all in the same color um, if I wanted to do that that way. It's really a matter of your preference and your choice at this point in time. But these are pretty nice, dark, intense colors. Blackberry Bliss for sure we know is our new copper kit clay, one of my favorites of the end colors. Um, So we're going to cover over everything and get it fairly dark. Up here in the corner. And now let's go ahead and grab the rest and cover the rest with copper clay. between copper clay and pecan pie. I'm not sure which my new favorite brown is, but one of them. Um, this one's a little more rusty color, copper color, right? And again, if I leave a few lighter spots, that's okay. It just adds a little to the color variation. And I will tell you, this is where you're going to get your fingers kind of inky because you're trying to hold down your, your cardstock and you're laying on a lot of ink. Okay, I'm going to bring my, this is my Blackberry Bliss. Let me just put that a little bit up here in the corners. Put this out of the way. And I'm going to find a baby wipe here and get some of the ink off my fingers just for a minute. And I'm going to take my microfiber cloth again and I am going to rub the ink off. And it's just rubbing off where the stamped images are. But you can see that the colors behind the embossing, that color is still there. And that's the batik. That is what you get with the batik technique. Isn't that cool? And we have one more step to do, which will make these images pop even a little bit more. And that is, we're going to iron this. And if you know me, I'm told I like to iron. I've been told that. I don't mind it. And I'm going to flip this over here so I get a little rid of a little bit of ink. I'll try to clean my hands once more. And I am going to bring in my iron. And to do this, um, we need to use something like newsprint. So I have this old pad of newsprint um, that I've had for years. And let's put that out of the way. And for today, we're just going to lay it on the top, leave one sheet up here. And we're going to lay over the cardstock the one sheet of newsprint. Now I'm going to take my iron and I want you to swatch what will happen. You'll see those embossed images show up here on the front. 
Yep, it's hot. Is that how your mom taught you to test the iron? Wet your finger and then tap the iron? That's how my mom taught me to test, make sure the iron was hot. And you want just a dry iron, um, no steam. Now you see that pattern in the newsprint? That's where I embossed. And when I peel this back, it removes the embossing powder and it's on the top of the newsprint. So now you no longer feel the raised embossing powder, but it also picks up a little bit of when it removes that because you've had ink on that, right? It, um, it, takes some, it takes that ink away that was had been transferred on the embossing that even though we rubbed it, we didn't get it off. Now, I usually like to do it twice just to make sure I've gotten it all off. It doesn't seem like it really matters if I do it once or twice. Um, I don't think we're, we'll see a big difference and it really didn't show that I took anything more off. So that is it. That is um, the card I was going to make for you today. Now I'm going to try, no, I can't do it. I forgot the last step, but I'm going to show you a card where before we inked it the last time, I took the card and creased it several times. Um, it won't work with this because I've removed the embossing powder, but I can do it just to show you what happens. So if you just take a bone folder and add multiple creases down the, I won't do the whole thing, down the front and then if you do it vertically as well, just kind of some random creasing. You will see that the cardstock does look like it wants to tear a little bit. That's okay, it didn't really hurt anything. And I'll show you the card, the completed card, where I did this through the whole thing and I did it in the right order. Um, so you do this technique before you put that last layer of the Blackberry Bliss and Copper Clay ink on. And then when you ink it, after that, it comes back and you get on those creases, you get some, it gathers the ink. I'm hoping you can see that. I'm going to try to bring it in close so you can see that. It just gives it a little bit more of a distressed look. So that's an optional technique. This is the card I made. Um, I mounted it to Wild Wheat, and on this card, I have a Blackberry Bliss um, mat behind it, and here I just used the die cuts from Wanted to Say um, to keep the card simple. Now I'm going to show you the other card that is made with the same, the way I did ours today, without the creasing, and this one is without the creasing. So... I hold these two side by side. You can, I think you can see the creasing on one and obviously you can't on the other. So it's kind of an option. The creasing is optional. Um, you can choose to do that or to just leave it like this one was, like I showed you today. The other two cards I showed, want to show you is the first card. This was done with white embossing powder. And it was done following the directions on the Split Coast Stampers. I don't know if you're familiar with Split Coast Stampers. It is a website where you can get all kinds of ideas, but they have lots and lots of tutorials on there that date back for years and years and years. So it's kind of interesting. Some of the tutorials are so old that we now have tools to do what was done as a technique or a tutorial. And you don't have to do those techniques anymore if you don't want to. Um, but this was made with the Grassy Grove stamp set. And on this one, I did use white embossing powder. And their video says to overheat the embossing powder. Basically, you heat it long enough so that it 
cooks it further than we want. You know how I always tell you don't overheat it because it'll lose its shine or um, it kind of starts to burn it a little bit. Well, in their burn tech, burn the tea technique, they want you to burn it. And that's what I did with this one. But I have to be honest, it did turn the, the white embossing powder did turn kind of a, a yellowish creamy color. So it was definitely overheated. Um, it, I, it probably took me 10 minutes of embossing to get it to do that. Um, but when I went to do the technique and the blending on here, I didn't really notice, I didn't figure out what the difference was between burned batik and embossed resist. So that's why I went on a further search to try to find out um, what other things were called batik. And that's where these were, and this is more with the layering of the different colors, doing some stamping and then doing some additional layering. Um, but I thought this turned out pretty. This is Grassy Grove, as I said. Um, I did the trees first and then blended on my ink. Then I, and so I had all my ink blended. The, this, this is Old Olive, um, or actually it was Granny Apple Green, Daffodil Delight, Highland Heather, Gorgeous Grape, and Starry Sky. So I did that. And then I came back and I stamped the grass with Versamark and heat embossed that with clear. And then these speckles I also embossed with clear. I added those after. So you can see that on the grass, it did it does pick up the grainy apple green behind it. So that's why I think the other um, tutorials I found said to use clear because then you could layer the colors. If I had used white, it would still be white, right? So my recommendation is, um, use clear because then what's behind it will show through. But I, I liked the card. I thought the card turned out pretty. Um, so I, I at least wanted to show you the, the card and show you what I found. Now with this next book card, um, this is made with a new stamp set from the mini uh, Sparkling Snowflakes, I think it's called. And this is the one that these are not these are more of a line image than a solid image, but the lines are close together. Now they did have solid images for these also in that stamp set, which um, if you were to like stamp the solid image, then you could do a two-step stamp and stamp the detailed image over top of it. Um, but I decided to just use the detailed ones. And um, the colors I used here on the first layer were Bubble Bath, Fresh Freesia, pool party, um, like, like here where I used the Moody Mauve, the um, Old Olive, and the Wild Wheat. These I used, the Bubble Bath, Fresh Freesia, and Pool Party. And then I embossed it with clear. And I didn't do all of them though. You can probably see the ones that are a little bit brighter and where you can see some of the pinks are in them. I only did those snowflakes and then I came back after I after I blended on um, azure afternoon and blueberry bushel I then came back and stamped some of these that are just more in the blues so it gives you some variation in the color of your snowflakes that that way and then once I completed that then I came back again with a azure afternoon and the blueberry bushel ink and went over it, wiped it off, and then I ironed it. Um, so that is my fourth card. I hope you like those cards. Let me um, let me go ahead and put my camera back. All right. Um, so I hope it it's a few different options of ways to do it. And I know I didn't show you each and every one. Um, because I try to keep these relatively short. I know I don't like to, I'm not crazy about watching long videos that go beyond an hour. Um, I prefer the half hour ones. So I try to keep these relatively short, but if you have any questions, um, please leave me a comment. I'll try to answer any questions and 
Thank you for watching. I'm so glad you're here. And if you would give me a thumbs up and I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. And um, I hope to see you back next week with something else. Don't know what. Um, maybe I'm going to pick something that I actually knew how to do before I did it, right? Um, so anyway, we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Have a good one.